Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So for today, we're gonna do a simple landscape. I'm gonna break down this. You don't need traceables or anything like that. Just showing you how I paint this. Just wiggling the paintbrush back and forth. I use a few paintbrushes, a flat wash brush, round brush, a, a long round brush, and just washing in the sky. Some people get really intimidated by that. I'll show you how I break down. It's really a good idea to have some good quality cold pressed paper for our sky. And that's why you're probably not having really good you know outcomes with your skies because it's probably not a good cold press um yeah and i'll break down how to do like the little simple reflection here as well if you have any questions please leave in the comment section and i'll try and answer them um, also check out my patreon it's ad free videos traceables exclusive tutorials on thursdays that are longer and more in depth than they are on youtube i also have a live stream in the top tier where you can ask questions and go over things and um i have a facebook group with we have weekly challenges, monthly giveaways, things like that. And Patreons get first dibs in my watercolor workshops and retreats. So it's good to be a patron. I can find the uh, information and the link in the description box below. But without further ado, let's get painting our landscape. All right, for this tutorial, I'm using Fabiano's 100% cotton cold press paper block. I'll be playing around with many brushes, a flat wash brush that's 3 4 inch from Princeton's Velvet Touch series. Just washing my sky with the number six Velvet Touch series. You know, playing around with maybe probably another Neptune number 12 uh, brush. And if I have to use a number eight long round, I might use that. I don't know. Uh, we're going to be just playing around with color and washing in color. You don't need to have a traceable or anything. I think I just kind of drew a straight line across like almost halfway down and then like a little curvy one here and like a little mountain back here just to give me a placement of where the greens are. And just kind of wiggle the line here. Maybe I'll put some a pond over in here, which would be like basically like a light, like wash of gray or blue. So for the sky, we'll play around with some different colors. I'm gonna grab my ultramarine blue, cobalt I have over here. I'm gonna put a little turquoise. I'm gonna grab some a uh, little bit of peacock blue. You can mix a little um, magenta in there. Get a little purple playing around with some colors. You want to mix them all up before you go and see how loose and wet they are. People get confused about consistency. The tea, the tea is the consistency. It's so wet. Look at that. It's like water. That's the blue. So I can start to just take the paint. I'll, I'll take the pad and kind of hold it up like this. And I'll just wash in some blue. This is the ultimate blue. See them kind of swooping down there, downward, swooping downward. Grab some more paint, grab some cobalt. You always want your blues kind of darker on top and lighter on the bottom because the atmosphere, when you see it from far away of the perspective, would be lighter. So I'm gonna grab some water now at this point and have it drip down. And it's only gonna drip to where the water is. See, moving the water that way. Kind of coming in and meeting it now. Leaving some white. And then you could play around with this with the colors and maybe I'll add a little paint spray in my blue. It's a little deeper, darker, kind of stormy kind of cloud here happening. And kind of moving it downward and leaning it. I'm just kind of taking some of this paint off the paper. Left a little white in there. It's very light on the left side. I'm going to go Go back and grab a little bit of more color. Just gonna put it in some of that in here. Don't fuss with it too much. Ultramarine blue, paints gray. It's always like I said, darker on top. Just gonna put a little dark here, and we'll bleed downward. And we'll have a nice little sky. Look at that. You always want to keep it light towards the bottom. I'm going to lift up some of this excess paint and tap it back in my paper towel and I've created my sky. Don't fuss it too much. Now I've got a little paint kind of puddling in here that's kind of dark. I'm just going to kind of remove that. If I want to go back and make it a little bit darker, I might go back and one more swipe up the top with the gray and the blue. I really kind of want to mix them up. If I want to add a little purple in there for effect. Let's swipe down. Boom. 
just trying to get that darker stormy kind of cloud look. I would bleed a little bit. I don't like these little lines that are happening. I want to make it one big swoop. And I think that's good enough. If you want it lighter over here because maybe it's sunny coming through, you might want to lift a little paint. I'm going to lift some of it over here and down the bottom. Again, don't fuss with it too much. And we'll have our pretty sky. Ta da! Now, the water will reflect the sky a little bit. So, take the colors we just used, kind of put it in here. I'm going to have a little waterway here. Zigzag, like a little pond. Again, just a little touch of color where the pond would be. Maybe put a little pond in here. If you mess up, don't worry about it because you're going to put some green in the background. See, just a little zigzag. I might want to add a little um, peacock blue, a little turquoise. I know that's a little too bright. Let's see. It was looking too purple. I want it more blue. So I'm going to remove some of this color that I have. And just go back in and add a little bit of, little bit of turquoisey blue. So it's not so purple. There we go. Boom. Just a little wiggle effect. Doesn't have to be perfect. And that's kind of all it. We're going to let that dry. We're going to make it like mountains in the background. The purple kind of color tones. And we get some bright chartreuse kind of green going through here. And that's, you don't have to make landscapes that complicated. They're really just not that complicated. Just putting down color and washing it in. So now I'm going to mix up some greens. I take my cabin yellow deep, peacock blue for a nice bright green. Now you heat me going back and forth in the water. Add the water a little bit of time. Now this water is now kind of like milk. And so it's bright, bright chartreuse color, very loose. I'm going to grab my flat wash brush. By the way, you should have some other colors mixed at the same time. So it's good to have all the greens mixed up at once. I'm going to make some burnt ember, some Prussian blue, and then grab the yellow, make a darker green, I'm going to add more blue, make a nice dark, dark, deep green. I like to add a little burnt umber to it, put some over here, mix it in a little bit more. And you can mix some medium greens by just dapping in the, the dark into the light. So, flat wash brush. Get some water on it, grab the chartreuse color, and we're just going to play with adding that really bright green over here. Kind of filling in this area. And listen, don't freak out if it doesn't do. If it goes over the blue a little bit, don't let it freak you out. It's not a big deal. So I'm just going to go over this whole thing. Remember, it's just like an expressive landscape. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to come down here and adding the bright green in here. Grabbing some water, more water in my brush and just kind of mushing it down. See? Got that bright green. I love this color. Now here we can play around with the bottom. I'm just going to grab some water. Even if it's like light green in the water, I'm just going to mush it around. Push it down a little bit. And now we can start to play with adding some different color greens. I'm going to go back up here and add some more of that chartreuse color. And here's that green. We can pick some of that green in here. We got medium green and yellow. You can start to play with just tapping in some deeper greens, putting some deeper greens over this way. So, like a tree's happening over here. Little mound. 
grab some of the browns. I know it's dark right over that chartreuse green, but don't worry about it. Dark green. Just gonna play in with adding the color down in here. The darker, the more closer it is to you, the darker it will be. You know, play around with this. Just kind of swooping, moving my brush back and forth. Grabbing in the darker tone again. Putting a little bit up here. Now I'm gonna grab some yellow, mix it in with that darker tone. You should see the consistency is a little thicker. A little bit like cream. I'm just gonna put a little bit of dark tones here. And a little bit back here. Just on the chisel end of the brush. See how I just kind of tapped it? And I'm just gonna chisel it like this. See, I'm swiping it. Just really gently touching the paper. Now I'm grabbing some thick burnt umber and some green, kind of twisting it here. Get that Prussian blue in here, get even darker. So you get this like green area, it's like you can put like a road coming down this way, we can put some dark greens down this way, kind of swoop them up. Now, if you have a credit card close by, we can use that for like grasses. See, so I'm making the paint a little bit thicker. Just kind of building a little bit more. Swooping, getting that real cool energy. Maybe you want to have a road. So I'm going to grab some burnt umber, water it down, put some road over here, kind of lift some paint and move it this way. We have a little road happening. Burnt umber. This little road this way. Coming out to this area. Just some little dibby dabs. Some trees on the side of your brush. So I've just made some green. <sighs> Tap. And then again, just taking your brush and kind of swooping it. Just have some fun with that. Little mech, little tippy taps. I'm gonna add a little more brown to this. Again, it's thicker paint now. Hold the chisel on the side. Maybe you can put like a, like a tree, kind of make like a tree happening here and here. And a little bit of green, dark green kind of happening out here and here. We're building and building and building. If you take the credit card, like an old credit card, you can kind of scrape up some grasses. Let's have fun just kind of mushing in some, some grasses with like a little brush here. This is the Princeton 8 Long Round. Kind of like what I did with my um, wildflowers and just kind of wiggling the brush back and forth. Yeah. Grabbing some brown and some Payne's Gray. Just get the energy out, get all the energy out. Take it out on the paper. <laughs> it's kind of fun, right? Take it out on the paper. I got some splatters in here, but that's okay. Get some brown happening here with the grass. Tip, tip, tap. That area. See? It's like a little pond now. We haven't even got to the back mountains yet. I'm just gonna go like back and forth here with a little green. I have the Princeton eight long round. But really, you don't see me doing anything crazy. I'm not just kind of wiggling back and forth to make these grasses, grabbing some browns, thick paint, mix it with the greens, back and forth. Just getting some energy. And we even paint's gray, kind of throwing that in here. We wanna have some fun with this. Doesn't have to be perfect. Energy. If you want to just take your brush, grab that bright yellow again. Go in here and have fun. We're having fun with this brush. We're just kind of mushing things around. Grabbing the pink. I mean, excuse me, <laughs> pink. <laughs> yellow. Boom. All right, at this point, I'm going to stop. You could put some grasses kind of going over the water. Getting a little wild here. 
if you want to take some like white gouache and kind of splatter it a little bit while it's still wet over here, it might have that kind of cool effect where it's like atmospheric um, dissipating on it. So I'm taking some gouache, just tapping a little bit. See what happens. Don't tap it up there. Tap it close to the paper, only in the wet areas. It'll have a cool effect. Right? How simple is that? Now we're going to work on this, this mountain up top. Going to move some of this green. And I'm just going to grab like ultramarine blue and some magenta or if you have like bright rose, this bright rose. Just make like a nice purple, bluish purple. I'm going to water it down. I always tap it on my paper towel and we can start to put in the purple color in the background where the mountain would be. Right, a little mountain back here. Might want to add like a little reddish brown in some other areas. This is purple. I'm gonna take a little bit of magenta, a little paint, um, burnt umber. So it's like a reddish brown. I'm gonna water that down a little bit. And put some like over in here. Like another layer of the mountain. I'm just having fun. See? Just change it a little bit. You might want to make this purple a little bit deeper. So I'm going to add that magenta in with this purple and go back and add some ultramarine blue so it's a little bit darker. Not too much though. I'm just playing with the little mountains here. I might add another one back here. Look at that. Already it's so cool. Right? So we can start to play with adding in some thick yellow, like just like almost like a thick yellow paint here. So it's kind of like a meadow with flowers. Grab whatever brush you have that's convenient. I'm going to grab my 12 Aqua Elite. Now this might be still damp, but you can start to just tippy tap. Tippy tap means just tapping the brush. Do do, little yellow flowers. Those are really bright, but it's really thick. It's kind of cool. We have some nice little meadow happening. Get a little thicker. You want to splatter it if it's small up front a little bit. Not necessary to put the little metal flowers in, but it'd be kind of cool. Right? My little meadow. Now this part will get a little more advanced by like making a reflection in the water, right? So grab a little clean water on your brush. This is my Princeton 8 long round. I'm just going to kind of wiggle this and wiggle this. And then you're going to grab some green that you mixed up. If it's really loose and wet, I always tell people, tap it on your paper towel. See how I do we tap that? And just kind of do this wiggle. Maybe it's a little too wet, loose, not dark enough. I'm going to grab some darker green. That's not so loose and wet. I'm just going to wiggle down to like a little triangle like that. See? Wiggle. Even the chartreuse color, medium green. Again, in that area, just kind of wiggle it. I'm gonna grab some more yellow. So it wiggles down that little reflection. I can put like a little tree here so it kind of reflects something. Just tippy tapping and then get the dark color in there. Again, that dark green, real tree. I'm gonna just make like a real tippy tappy tree happening. And then there's the reflection of the tree. Something just really kind of simple. Don't have to reflect a lot. Just something simple like that. See, get the darker color, just tap it. And just do like a little wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle. Might want to do a little bit out here. Not too much. So it's reflecting the little green a little bit here. 
So again, duck, like a rack back around in here, you can just grab some darker tones and go back in and put a little, little scrape little grasses, kind of going over that walkway a little bit, back out in here with the deep green. And that's kind of it. Like you can add more depth and ding and things to it as you go. It's just like a simple landscape. If you're struggling to figure that out and doing some like reflections, that is a simple reflection. Oh, my studio today. Nothing but interruptions. Isn't it lovely to have a home studio? <laughs> nope, it is not. Anyway, I'm going to go back in here with a little bit more color. Bright chartreuse, just to, just to elevate it a little bit more. I'm grabbing that bright yellowish green. Going back in here a little bit more. And that is that. This one got a little darker than I wanted to, but that's okay. Just gonna go in there. And that's my simple little landscape to do reflections. If you're struggling, you know, and do like a waterway, just as simple. If you wanted to put maybe the reflection of the mountain, but it's pretty far away, so I don't think they would reflect in the water. And then you can do some a little bit of darker toned mountains kind of like in here grabbing some like brown with some pink land mass kind of back here and that's that you can add whatever flowers you want it could be yellow you can go in and tap in a little gouache too some little meadow flowers up front be careful not to get everywhere it's always fun this is like my favorite thing to do and that's it. That's where you are. Simple landscape. You know, don't have, you can want to add a tree in here. There's so many videos on trees. Put like a little house back here. All that good stuff. So I hope this was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like, don't get freaked out. Don't get, you know, intense about just putting down the color. Just a simple wash of the bright green. You're bleeding in some darker greens. If you want to have a walkway here, you can like a little brown walkway. The, the mountains in the background. All that good stuff. And I might want to add a little more brown here for my walkway and some depth by having a shadows. It's up to you. Here I'm adding some Payne's Gray in with that brown walkway back here as it goes in the back a little bit. Right? So it looks more like a walkway instead of just some weird, oh, actually not a walkway, a path, I'm sorry. Put the path back here. You don't even have to have a path. It's up to you. And just put some nice bright greens, maybe going over it. All that fun stuff, see? Woo! You can take the yellow like right out of the tube, mix it with your greens and kind of go right over that. It's fun. You'd be surprised if you're grabbing some watercolor right out of the tube, what it does. And there you go. All right, guys. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel. I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care, and I'll speak to you soon.